We're only on the second game of this grand finals, and it's already delivered an absolute banger. What could they do to eclipse that? It's time to find out. One and all, welcome back to the show matches. We've got $100 on the line here to test out Avalee's newest creation, Scarguard. Wait, was it Scarguard? Yeah. I keep saying Scarsguard instead. It's Scarguard. So we've got an interesting map here. Water has no fish. It has relics, sacred sites, and gold on it. It's a very different style. And with the way the food is spread across the map, we've seen just how painful starvation can be in the greatest of empires. So let's put it to the truest test by throwing the Byzantines to the wolves here. The kid, Voldemar himself, on the Byzantines, going up against, yep, aka Core, on the French in the orange. Really great French here. This is a very interesting matchup. I was just saying in the pre-lobby, I recall a very distinct game from Kiljardi where he starved map vision and presence to bait a Byzantine player into spamming Limitane. And then he didn't build more than four knights after 20 minutes. He, he, he built mass archers. So I'm wondering if Core has a similar idea where he's going to look to just box Voldemar in his base. Voldemar is going to expect to not be out on the map because it is French knights after all. And then his only way to get out is going to be to do Limitane. So this is like, yeah, this is this is surprising. You'd be actually impressed just how much of a difference Vision makes. Because confirmation is everything. If you choose the wrong contract here, you lose the game. And a lot of players will just inherently go Lombos, but I think you're meant to go Javelins here. I've seen quite a few players against French just do Lombos and just turtle up, bulk up, and then come out eventually, but... I think it has to be jabs or busts. I guess the tricky part is like if you do jabs, your opponent can just kind of spear night spam, I guess, which is pretty effective. I've yet to see someone try Keshix, but I don't rate Keshix highly here. I think Keshix is much, uh, much more of a difficult to execute comp than the other two. And that's on maps where you have six berries to start with on a grand winery. This is a game where you're going to have two. In fact, I kind of feel bad for Voldemar. Dude, he passed up the double berry stack on the Ford. All because he's paranoid about the French aggression. That sucks, though. I mean, I, I get it, right? You don't want to be building Grand Winery Ford because then your farms are Ford. But it's going to make the initial Merc contract so hard to tick. Kind of rough, right? He would have preferred to maybe have this type of spawn. Maybe Biz not so good. No, Biz, I think Byzantines will be good on this map. And here's why. Their farms are way too efficient still. Their farms are like top three best farms in the game, right? In terms of cost, reinvestment, what you get out of it, right? And, you know, there is an opportunity for French to exploit that because it's such an aggressive sieve. But in general, there's a reason why in this show match no. setups we've had, we've had Voldemar versus Myriad. We've had four players playing. I'm pretty sure Byzantines has been one of the most banned alongside HR in English. And the reason is that farm transitions being so cheap or efficient or viable um, offsets one of the biggest key factors about this map, which is you should be out on the map. The deer would demand it. Otherwise, you die. And yeah, Zhuzhi Meditation Garden suck. We've had one or two Zhuzhi games. I was not a fan because one of the biggest drivers on Meditation Gardens being good for Zhuzhi is the berry mass. And usually that eight stack of berries, which just doesn't exist here. So, Rax already dropped. Limitana is expected. School of Cavalry is in. First night is already on the way. But you've seen a lot of people across in the wood. Seeing with seven people on wood suggests we are going to be seeing a swift transition into archers, which would make a lot of sense here. And that is peculiar. Okay, so yeah, it's just the assistant. For a second there, I thought Voldemar was walling like this with just wood walls. It looked like it on the minimap. But we're just setting up the assistants. So buff on the gold, buff on the berries. Most importantly, buff on that tree line. One thing that's a little bit awkward here for Voldemar is he's gathering from his four tree line. The reason that's awkward is it means that, you know, considering this is your life essence, having this as your Ford resource, if this starts to get shut down, game over, right? Because you need this to scale the, into the farms. You're going to need this to scale into, say, archers. You're going to need it to scale even to Limitane. Yes, it's only 10 wood, but it needs to come from somewhere. 
And love this on the other side. Just straight out into the pocket resources. We've seen a few players going for pro scouts, and it is kind of tempting, I know, when you consider the discount you get as French, but I think pro scouts would be a critical error here for Core. He needs all forces pushing because, as we know, the Byzantine economy is kind of broken. 20% more resources from the olive oil, then you've got the buff already come from the cistern. They get head pretty fast. So in a game situation where that olive oil detail is a bit weaker, you need to fully exploit that with pressure. And there aren't many better sieves at doing that than the French. Oh, she's already in the way. And you are correct. <laughs> he had to go with the olive grove. If it wasn't for that, he wouldn't have enough of the mercs. So merc cow's coming. I think we're looking at Javs. There's no way Voldemar doesn't suspect what he's up to. Right? Cool. Hasn't revealed yet. And <gasps> Did he see the deer move? There's an archer coming right now. Is Cor going to offer this info up for free? There's no way, right? Actually, that wolf may have just saved him from revealing it. It's important that Cor doesn't come any closer. He needs to make Voldemar work for this information. He can't give it over for free. And he makes the right choice. He does it blind, but he has got the right choice coming in. Silk Road is going to be selected. So Javelin counter on the way now for the archers. Scout is going to run away in time. Important you don't lose that so you know what the kind of bounce is. Otherwise, you could end up over-investing into like Limitane when you don't need many. I think now, because this info is revealed, you're probably going to see Core just take a more balanced flow where it's like, you know, 50% of your resources into archers, 50% into knights. And then you try to play for the big numbers, right? Blacksmith transition is going to be intriguing. It shouldn't be a weak point for Voldemar because he does have the retracted gold, so he'll be able to gather towards those techs. And remember, with the Byzantines, because the system choices, Dialecticus can make those unlocks very fast. Archer's trying to poke. Unfortunately for him, Voldemar stopped at the perfect tree before he'd reveal himself. So, I'd love to see, actually, you know, I think Cole just needs extra vision. So, either go for a scout or this is a bit more zealous. He's actually going for an outpost. What in the deuce? It's kind of cool, right? Like we've said, the Voldemar is very reliant on a Ford resource, and that's an exposure point. And he's unlikely to scout this. His paranoia is now on the east side. He needs to make sure his opponent isn't up to anything nefarious. And big mistake there. Voldemar, he got baited. Nice grab. Didn't even need the knights in the end. The archers were good enough. So scout goes down. And Voldemar is now playing blind. He does now see the outpost, though, by some miracle. Guess what? That miracle is called border settlements. Why? Like, this tech is still so good. That might save his bacon here, actually. That outpost... A few extra three seconds, and that would have been undeniable. But instead, Voldemar reads it at the perfect moment. Villager goes down. Still a free eco lead. Remember, the French are going to scale more economy over time. An awkward stay for Voldemar, man. <laughs> he's eventually going to have a lot of jabs. But for now, you're seeing how much he's struggling. Right? Remember the cost of these jabs. It sits at 460. So it's going to take him about four and a half minutes to afford four more javelins. That's terrible. A knight produces in you know, less than 35 seconds. It shows you how drastically weak that production rate is. It's a weird mill. Um, no, because he's creeping around the, the TC, right? It's not the worst of ideas. Also, I think he had the deer here, so it's value point there as well. Flash coming in, archers. I'm going to start to wail on Limitane. Knights are wrapping around the flank. Good reaction coming out from Voldemar, though. Cool. He has wailed away a lot of these Limitane. I think there's a big mistake here from Voldemar. Not having Undermesh at this stage. Definitely feels like it's hurting him. Knights in the meantime are going to surge in. And if you just get one or two jab kills, this is huge here. He doesn't have the numbers, but instead, a bit of a miss rally, a bit of a miss aggro there. Javelins aren't dying. Wall has at least been broken. So that's going to make things a bit more uncomfortable as Voldemar has to back up. But it's only one night now. So even with these Limitane being removed, Core doesn't have that many units to push in with. Then again, does Voldemar really have many to defend with? I think at this stage, Voldemar actually probably would have benefited from going archers. He's now instead going to be going into a double stable horseman play himself. 
Thank God he cancelled that. Yeah, this is the bigger thing. The reason why his javelins can't even hold there is because of the plus one, plus one. Yeah, this is one of those classic situations where I just kind of look at the option of going archers itself and think it's kind of slept on. Archer Limitane is still pretty good, right? Like, you've got an inflated economy. You're against an opponent who doesn't have better archers. Your Limitane are very tanky, especially if you prioritize blacksmiths. It's almost like Voldemar was relying on the idea of just being able to have enough mercenaries here. And as we see, you take two-thirds of a Grand Winery's initial berries away, and it's quite the flop. Cool. He's trying, <laughs> bless him, he's trying to reach the injured wall there, or the half-constructed one. But it's in a weird spot between the berry and the house, so you can't touch it. But it's all good. It doesn't take them long to get through. Remember, rams get double damage versus walls. Horseman revealed very early here. Now that is peculiar. Uh, Core is not bothering with knights. He's just full-on sending it into archer production. What would be even crazier here, but actually would win him the game, is if Core, instead of building knights, built spears. His opponent doesn't have archers. He won't build archers. So you'd counter the horsemen, you'd bog down the limitane, you'd counter the javelins. Like, weirdly enough, French building spears is almost an instant win here. So he's going to keep start stepping away for good reason. Undermesh is in, but no steeled arrow. No bloomery, no extra text like that. Horsemen are being whittled away at. Javelins are going to get dove again. And I just, I can't believe in this, man. This is just painful to watch. <laughs> This is giving me flashbacks to release Byzantines where everyone's like, they're crap. <laughs> it's, if you saw this game and no other game of Age of Empires 4 with Byzantines this year, you'd think Byzantines needed some of the biggest buffs imaginable. Triple Ram. I think Core wants to end the game. Luckily for the kid, because Voldemar didn't put his farms on the front side, he's not going to lose the prime of his economy, right? Uh, but wood is still a really big deal at this stage. Scaling the farms, getting into horsemen, limitane. It all requires that wood access. Cool, we start shuffling in. Only two horsemen. He's going to take the stab quite happily here, right? Well, you'd think he would. A little bit of a messy fight there. Somehow the ram ends up getting pinched. Limitane count has rescaled. And cool. I just can't tell, man. <laughs> is he overextending or is this the correct read? It feels really weird the amount of units he has to lose to get so little in return. But when you consider how many more archers you can build compared to how many more javelins you can build, in a weird way, it kind of works. It's not clean by any stretch of the imagination. But he's essentially just leveraging how weak the olive oil gathering is for Voldemar. Bit of extension from them tied there. Still one knight here, so Voldemar needs to show a little bit of respect. Dive is going to come in, one for one trade. Rams are now going across, and I think this is where villagers are getting targeted. No Akratoi defense getting activated, so a few eco units are going to go down. And you know, despite the fact that Voldemar is holding and Core is admittedly throwing away a lot of units, remember that he's French. Which is why he's so good at running up now. It's, which is why he's so comfortable with the status quo. Because the status quo is not a status quo for the French. Their economy will keep scaling. And Byzantines have a way to mirror that with the system buffs. But it's very expensive. It's very limited. It doesn't always feel natural as well. And this is 100% just attacker defender, right? Like... Voldemar, game one, try to play greedy, eco, very defensive. Game two, doing the same. And Core with a relentless aggression in that game as well. But I think we've got a switch up, potentially. He's starting to flow extra resources. So I'm wondering if the idea of trying to go Castle Age is crossing his mind. I don't see crazy value in it. Men at Arms in Fury could be cool. That's about it. I would legit rather just see Core switch into Spears. Like, double racks here would pop pretty hard. Instead, we're up to, what, four archer ranges, double stables, so triple stables even. So, yeah, no signs of switching. 
All right, who do you think... I'm legit curious because I saw a few different answers. Who do you guys think is winning this now? Twos if you think Voldemar's winning. Ones if you think Cora's is winning. Because I feel like Core's winning. It's definitely not the easiest way to win it, but... Voldemar is kind of in a bind. It's not often you say that when someone's got this many of the Groves up. But I think he is going to find himself quite limited on wood at this rate. He's got the south side, but I don't think that's as well protected with enough. As he's like set all these outposts up here, right? Like triple outpost defense. Pretty heavy investment. Looks like Voldemar's trying to come out. Knights are going to mirror the move of the horsemen. Limitane have to give way and open up the field. Narches are going to be able to exploit that. Knights now cycling around again. So Cav basically trading for the back lines. The Limitane are still kind of being king here, but not for much longer. Horseman count is down to two. Core is relentlessly chasing that one horseman, but it doesn't even matter. Limitane count is too low. Voldemar has to leave, and now with the resurge... Might this be the point where he breaks? He's got another group of jabs on the way. That will put him up at 11. But at the same time when you're at 11 javelins, Core is going to be mirroring that with night count. I think Core needs to tech. So the weird thing about this matchup is although he's kind of winning on economy, right? It's growing and growing and growing. The big pet peeve here. The issue is eventually the food is going to run out. And when it does, you're going to be st staring down the barrel of a fully powered farm transition for the Byzantines that you don't have. So, you know, either switch spears or, or play castle ace. So I feel like this attempt to just keep diving is starting to fall off a little bit. And it's just a meat grinder you can't afford long term. Instead, maybe a switch up. Maybe instead we go after the farms. Ram is going to break through. I love this play if he starts taking out farms. Knights are going to see an opening here. Voldemar not moving. Slow reaction there. Limitane starting to pull back. That will force a retreat out of core. Wall is going to be brought down. But Ram now needs to retreat. Ah, that's it, guys. I think this game is over. I think it's going to be 1 1. Core has so many knights, but like this is just not sustainable. It's. It's so tunnel visiony. It's very hard to remember these type of moments. But I think Core being stuck on Archer Knights this entire time has gradually lost him the game. It's weird because I remember, like in French mirrors, you know, French players always look at that transition into Spearman because it wins the game. But this is a matchup where I think just as equally Spears wins, and it's also a big reason why like Byzantine players were always worried they need to go Lombos is because if a French player gets to go Spears, Javelins get countered. And yeah, this is going to be a loss of the Knights, and I think a loss of the game. So we are going to get some distance in this series. Knight count is now down to just nine. Numbers are not impressing anymore. Voldemar has options. He can either tech or he can send it. But now, finally, he has the olive oil income to support a send. Meanwhile, cool. Barely scraping together remaining archers. Wait, hold a sec. Knights. All right, Voldemar's going to head back home. That's a good fight for Core. But the food, I'm just seeing the icons disappear on the map, guys. If he slips up and falls back that far next time, he's not going to be able to gather, right? Because he's running out of safe food. It's weird because like, if Core could just min-max constantly, like even taking these unfavorable fights, if you get Knights away on 1 HP, right? Chivalry returns but I don't think he's done enough of that like eight nights in total about to go up to ten Voldemar is coming in with the walls now he's carving the map villagers also a little bit overextended are gonna be seen so four eco out on the front side in the meantime horsemen are raiding to the back of the base don't think we have expilatorius coming in no might be worth considering, though, because considering he's got about a 1,000 food income a minute, he could just pump up to 10, 15 horsemen and raid the back line. Which is really smart on this map, because remember, safe gold is quite limited when you play on Skarguard. So just having 20-plus for clearing the eco is a jackpot.
Oh, I'll give it to them, man. These two have delivered in the series so far. This has been incredibly entertaining. I've got a feeling the first game is going to be almost impossible to top. But I love the fact that we're just sticking to the script of the relentless aggression and relentless defense. Or rather, I, actually, you know what it is? It's relentless aggression versus restless defense. Yes. Calm before the storm. See, Voldemort isn't content with the idea of attacking up because he knows that caused putting everything back into an army, right? So, like, Voldemort needs another win in a fight, and this would be big. Horsemen, they find the villagers. Knights are on the way, but not before some people get scalped. And the beautiful thing about playing Horsemen here, folks, the moment that the Knights do arrive, you can just run away. Ooh, a little bit greedy there. Try for the double tap. Army is fully reacting now. Archers are slightly out of position here. Limitana are just going to send it in. And the Knights, this is awkward. Not next to the tree line, he can't get the charge off, so no bonus damage coming through. Not that he wants to now, so it looks like an absolute route here. Archers already down. 14 javelins is good enough. And Horseman now just trying to force the Knights to hang around to defend the villagers instead. It means he's losing his back line of army. 41 to 25 military now. And the Limitane count looks high enough to take on the world. Oh my word. Remember what we said about the state of the economy, right? Like, the approach Core took is he took the safe food first. So he has to play more aggressive and more aggressive and more aggressive. He can't anymore. He's getting blocked. Not just that. That TC problem, you know, the faster producing French doesn't exist. 17 seconds doesn't beat... Two times 20 seconds. Now Nika lead. An insane turnaround here. As Voldemar is now ready to pull the trigger. Castellage is being prepped for. Core has got a lot of knights. But it feels more like a lot of squat at this stage. He's got some farms coming in, but I just can't really bank against the Byzantines when they're sitting on 42 farms. Not to mention a tech advantage. Golden Horn Tower now coming up. I would not blame Core if he just GG'd the moment the tech up completed. He'll probably go for a fight, and I respect that. But after that fight, he'll fully understand the state of the game. Like, he's lost way too many engagements now. And yeah, don't trust army value. Capture age, didn't finish their work. Um, Olive Oil doesn't track on that UI. Wolves going up. Love this. So Voldemar is trying to funnel it. It's a lot of knights. He doesn't want to have to chase them around his base. So these walls are going to push core into one direction. Javelins getting the perfect fight they want. The knights are nowhere nearby. They're too busy burning walls. Tech up complete. And if Core backs off now to tech up himself, I would be shocked if Voldemar doesn't just send it. Veterancy for the Limitane already queued up. Same with the Veterancy for the Contract. And you are correct. One Camel Rider ruins any hope for Core. Pinch comes in, grabs four knights straight away. Limitane are just going to send it in. We're getting pinched and a GG comes out. That is it. 1-1 scoreline in this best of five. The series continues to deliver.